Ladies and gentlemen, I've got some bad news, but I've also got some great news. We've seen a lot of fear and uncertainty in the markets this week, especially since the most significant part of the yield curve where the 10-year US Treasury yield inverted with the two-year Treasury, and this is signaling recession. But in today's video, I'm gonna go over something a bit controversial about how this could actually be very bullish for the stock market. I know what you're probably thinking, what, a recession? How could that possibly be bullish for stocks? Well, everyone, that's exactly what we're gonna get into in today's video, and thanks to Masterworks for sponsoring a part of this video, but more on that later. Okay, everyone, let's get into it. Well, the first thing you have to know and first thing we have to address is the big fears that have been in the market over the past few months. First, we have the Federal Reserve announcing they're going to start being very aggressive with fighting inflation by stopping their quantitative easing, by announcing they'll do seven rate hikes this year, and maybe even do more if inflation gets worse. And they announced they're probably going to start tapering their balance sheet in May as well. Also then what happened in February with Russia and Ukraine and fears that that could turn into a global conflict and how that's going to add to more inflation fears with the rise of commodity prices going up like oil, natural gas, and wheat. So then what we saw, we saw a huge sell-off in the high speculative sector in the NASDAQ sector, where it fell 21% and we also saw a 15% correction in the S&P 500. Because there's one thing that the markets hate, they hate uncertainty and they normally try to sell first and ask questions later. And while there still is risk of what's going on with Russia and Ukraine, we don't know how that is going to end, but there is more talk of peace talks going on right now. We'll have to see how that goes and I do hope the conflict can come to an end and some kind of resolution. And also there still is risk that inflation won't go away and the Federal Reserve may have to get aggressive, but unfortunately people what I think is they're not really going to get aggressive and they're not going to fight inflation. If they have to choose between the economy going into recession or even a depression and letting inflation run hot, I think they're going to choose the latter. But with the bond market signaling, it's all but guaranteed that we are entering a recession. What can we learn from history to show us what the markets will do in the future? Let's have a look. Okay, first things first, what we have to look at everyone, this is the US two-year treasury note. That is an IU from the government. That is a bond. They pay interest on this debt. And right now for the two-year treasury, yield, it is 2.46%. Because normally what happens with the mom market is short-term rates are normally lower and long-term rates are normally higher. But it's not just the 10 and two-year treasury yield that's inverted. Now look what's happening with the 30-year. Look at this, everyone. The two-year treasury yield is actually higher than the 30-year treasury yield now at 2.43%. That is absolutely crazy, everyone. But what some bond investors are saying, the reason why these yields are so skewed is because the Federal Reserve has been buying more long-term US treasury bills, which is kind of like monetizing the debt to make the debt and interest payments lower for the government over the long term. But maybe that's also why they announced they're going to start selling off some of the assets on their balance sheet, some bonds, so they can fix this inverted yield curve by selling more 30-year US Treasuries and 10-year US Treasuries. So things in the bond market definitely aren't looking good. Things for the economy with consumer sentiment falling, with debt costs at all-time highs, with the cost of living likely to going to hurt discretionary spending. I think what this is going to cause is the Federal Reserve, after it hikes interest rates to maybe say 1%, maybe they may actually do a U-turn like what they did in 2018. And what I think the market has tried to do over the past three months since December, where it's had this 21% decline in the NASDAQ and 15% in the S&P 500, they've tried to price in a recession. Now you're probably wondering, well, okay, what's the great news? And this is what the great news is everyone for investors. Look at this everyone, this is why the yield curve can actually be bullish for stocks. Because let's look what happened at the last time the yield curve inverted. In 1988, it inverted, and then the bull market hit a peak in 1990 and the S&P 500 actually returned 33%. So why the yield curve could signal recession for the economy, remember the markets right now, they're addicted to low interest rates and stimulus. And if the Federal Reserve does think we're heading for a recession, well, then they're going to drop interest rates and they're gonna turn the money printer up a notch. And this is why I've been talking about this possible melt-up scenario where the Federal Reserve is gonna let inflation run hot and the markets are actually gonna melt up. Now we all know inflation is a hidden tax and inflation is theft of your purchasing power. But I've got a way to make the market predictions work in your favor because there's actually an asset class out there with a price appreciation on average of 23% when inflation is above 3%. And that same asset exhibits low correlation to oil, gold, real estate, and other less popular alternatives, which makes it a great way to diversify your portfolio and protect your returns. This ad I'm talking about, like I've talked about on the channel, is contemporary art. And that's where I'm proud to work with today's video sponsor, Masterworks. And people, I never promote products I don't believe in. 
And me personally, I've wanted a way to invest in art, but there's been no way for me to invest in art with it costing millions and millions of dollars. But this is where Masterworks innovation has come in and it's absolutely game changing because now you can invest in contemporary art just like billionaires do for just a fraction of the price. The leading platform for art investing has even beaten Jeff Bezos to the punch because he spent 70 million on two paintings in 2020, including an Ed Rusha piece. And Rusha is one of the artists that's been offered on Masterworks in the past. So you can bet their 360,000 members took Took full advantage of that opportunity and it was good for them because to date masterworks has sold three of their offerings with each realizing a net annual gain of above 30 percent per piece now of course i have to add masterworks overall performance past performance is no guarantee of future returns but contemporary art since 1995 to 2021 has outpaced the s p 500 by 164 percent and some of my subscribers were probably among those that saw those returns because after my videos on masterworks so many of you guys signed up masterworks has given my viewers another round of priority access so click the link in the description and you can skip the waitlist and start diversifying your portfolio with contemporary art now back to the content okay everyone so that was the date of the inversion of 1988 but when we look here in 1998 to 2000 the s p 500 actually returned 39 percent again 2005 to 2007 it returned 24 percent and 2019 to 2020 it returned 18 percent for an average return of 28 percent and the months are on average uh, till the bull market peak was 17 months. But I know what you're probably still worried about. You're probably thinking, well, how can the markets go up when we're in recession? So let's also have a look to see what happened from history with the S&P 500 when the US entered recession. Okay, let's have a look here, everyone. This is a chart of the history of the past 11 recessions since 1953. Now, when we can look here, from 1953 recession all the way to the most recent recession in 2020, the average return during the recession was minus 1%. Now, six months before the recession, which is what we could possibly be now, or now we may even be in a recession, it was minus 2%. 12 months before, it was minus 3% the average. But everyone, like I try to teach on this channel, what the stock market does is it's always looking forward in the future normally six to 12 months, and they try to price in events before they happen, but the data always lags. So we could be in a recession right now, but we won't know it until we get the data of two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. And what we've seen in the stock market of selling off between 15% in the S&P and 21% in the NASDAQ, this could already be the market pricing in recession, like what we've seen happen over the past 11 recessions. But now let's look to see what happened six to 12 months after a recession. Look at this, everyone. Six months after the recession, it has an average of 7%. And we can see the most two recent recessions in 2007, it actually had a 21% gain after the 2007 recession and a 12% gain after the 2020 recession. But look what happens 12 months after. The average return is actually 16%. And, you know, in 2020, this was the most craziest recovery after recession from all that stimulus. It had 44% growth after 12 months after the 2020 recession and the most and the second most recent recession of 2007, 12%. And two years after, the average return is 20%. So what we can learn from history there is the market actually performs worse before the recession. It stays pretty much flat during the recession, but once the recession is over, that's when the market absolutely skyrockets. But like we don't know we're in recession now because we don't have the data yet, we won't know when the recession ends until we get the data as well. So what I'm thinking, again, this is not financial advice, just my thoughts and opinions. When I look at what's happening to the middle class, when I look at what's happening to the cost of living, it definitely does feel like we're in a recession right now with the cost of living becoming almost unbearable. And people, I really hoped the Federal Reserve would do their job to bring inflation under control, but now it's pretty clear they're definitely not. And me, I don't want to get left behind. I don't want to have my cash lose all its purchasing power when the Federal Reserve just lies and says, yeah, don't worry, we'll do something about inflation. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, we're going to do something. We'll lift interest rates when they won't. And then all of a sudden my cash gets devalued and the market skyrockets and I'm left behind. That's why I made this video about two weeks ago, how we're facing a much worse crisis than a stock market crash and how I said in this video about two weeks ago, why the market is going to melt up. And it's definitely looked like that's beginning to happen. So what you're also probably wondering, well, okay, how can we protect ourselves well everyone i think a lot of people didn't actually watch my full video yesterday i'm not actually selling all my gold 
All I was saying is I'm diversifying into gold and Bitcoin to protect myself against this market melt up. And me personally, what I think, again, everyone has different opinions on different assets. In my opinion, I think Bitcoin will outpace gold. So I've already held about 35% of my portfolio in gold. So now what I've done is with my cash pile that I've been building over the past year and a half, I've deployed 30% of that and I'm putting it into Bitcoin and I'm also putting it into stocks. Now me, I'm not an individual stock picker. I don't have time to research companies because I'm pumping out content for you guys. So I just simply buy the VTI, the total stock market index. Now I know what you're thinking, you need to stock up on food, fuel and security as well. Well, I've already done that and there's only so much food I can buy. That's why I'm also now deploying my cash into the markets as well. Now over the next week, I'm gonna be deploying another 10% of my cash. So that way I'll be up to 40% in the markets because I do still think there may be some fear coming or there could be some black swan events coming that could create a big downturn. So I'll be prepared for that. But I will slowly work my way up to over the next month, the 50% of my cash in the markets and 50% on the sidelines waiting for opportunities. So the way I see it is pretty much a win-win situation for me. If the markets continue to go up, I've got exposure to the markets. But if we do get some kind of black swan event or this recession does for whatever reason turn into a full-on depression, well, then I'm prepared for that. But everyone, what do you think? Let me know. Now, for all my loyal viewers and subscribers still watching, you're awesome. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next video.